Yo, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another video from the Sports Scoop. Hopefully, you can hear us well. We have our mic right here. Hello. Um, and today we are doing the top five underwhelming, I guess, worst rookies so far. Uh, me and Charlie are together for this one. Uh, last one we did together was the fantasy football team in the summer. Let's get into our top five overrated rookies. So number five, I feel like J.K. Dobbins. I feel like this one is one of those where it's, I guess, you could argue it simply because Ingram's been injured. They have Edwards, they have Justice Hill, um, a lot of running backs there, and he hasn't been bad. He has two touchdowns, he has 154 yards, he's been getting carries, um, but I feel like Ingram has been injured and he just hasn't stepped up. I feel like he should have should have more of a role in this offense, whether that be receiving or just getting more rushes in third down situations. Um, when he was drafted to the Ravens, I thought it was good, although that running back situation is very full. Um, so I like I, I think this one this is a debatable one. I feel like this one's kind of on the edge He's a bit underwhelming, but I think it, it could pick up depending on if he gets more carries So yeah, Dobbins number five. So yeah, JK Dobbins at number five I think it this isn't necessarily his fault. They've only given him 25 carries this season uh, He's going 6.2 yards per carry, which is not bad And as you said 150 yards two touchdowns not bad, but he just hasn't gotten enough carries to be Drafted as one of the top running backs in the class. He just hasn't gotten enough carries. He hasn't had enough action in the offense This is why we're putting him at number five and uh, number four. We've got Isaiah Simmons Isaiah Simmons has been I know he had the pick last week in overtime on Russell Wilson That was a huge pick for him, but other than that he only has 12 tackles this season um, He plays like a middle linebacker strong safety somewhere in there uh, he's really versatile and I was really high on him coming out of the draft and I still am but he just hasn't had the start of the season that I thought he was gonna have uh, I'm not exactly sure why but he just has not had a lot of tackles only the one pick um, no sacks no forced fumbles no fumble recoveries I think Isaiah Simmons was supposed to come in and be the most crucial part of this defense especially where he, he has 12 tackles at a middle linebacker and the versatile how, as versatile as he is that should be in the 40s he should have some of the most tackles I haven't been I haven't seen him getting that many snaps but 12 tackles is is poor that's there's corners who have more than that he was supposed to be a, the best linebacker at least he hasn't been that good they played the 49ers. He had to guard Kittle. That's always going to be hard. I'm not, you know, I couldn't guard Kittle. I don't, a lot of people can't. But the way he plays against some of these bigger players, his leverage isn't right. Playing too close to them and getting burned. He is getting penalties called against him for being sloppy, for pulling jerseys, for face masks. It's, it's, a, it's kind of one of those he just needs to learn. I think he, he can easily be. This, this is one of the most talented players in this draft class. He was absolutely incredible coming out of college. He could have gone higher. I think he, to be honest, dropped a bit in the class but if you're coming into an Arizona Cardinals team that has a lot of playoff potential in a hard division you're coming in as a the top linebacker in the country you have to produce and he just didn't now at number three we have Andrew Thomas uh, there's always a Giants player somewhere if you're talking about bad things Andrew Thomas the uh, offensive tackle from Georgia on the Giants I mean oh my god we can't get a pick we can't like we cannot get a pick right He's been, I would say, out of the top tackles, the worst one. Uh, Wirfs has been so much better. Jedrick Wills, I haven't heard that much about, but all the stuff I've heard has been good. I haven't heard any negative things. Mekhi Becton has been the best one. Uh, it's just, we can't get a break. We always go for that one player that's like, you feel like, why why can't you just go for the top one or the one with the most potential? They went for the safest one, and he's been bad. And it's hard to, to analyze offensive linemen, but I feel like if you're drafted the number one tackle, you have to do something, and he just hasn't. I mean, there's there's not much to say. Yeah, so I think that I, Thomas has been one of the worst tackles in the league, not only of the rookies. He just, I mean, he's allowed 13 quarterback pressures through through the first three games, allowed 13 quarterback pressures. He was your pick number four, and, I mean, every single other tackle taken in the first round that starts is outperforming him. Uh, I don't think there's any other way to put it. He is getting crushed. Teams are exploiting his weakness, as, I mean, as well as they're exploiting the other Giants O linemen, but him in particular as a rookie hasn't been great. Um, yeah, he just really has not been very good. Number two, where we have Derek Brown, and this guy, was, I, I don't understand how you, you're not good. This guy is an absolute beast. Coming out of Auburn, I don't understand. He's, he hasn't been that good. He has doesn't have a, doesn't have a sack. 
He has 18 tackles, uh, which is that's that's pretty good. Uh, compare that to Isaiah Simmons, like more tackles than him. But just I don't think he's been getting a lot of snaps. There's there's that, just not much there. I think he. If he doesn't pick it up, he might just become one of those defensive tackles that just gets moved around from team to team, then gets, then gets, you know, retires, and then there's a video like, what happened to Derek Brown, and yeah, Derek Brown, he's been just really disappointing for me. I think like he's starting to pick it up a little bit, but still not a single sack this season, and that's the key number for him. He does not have um, enough tackles for me to like pardon his lack of sacks. I feel like he would need to have as many tackles as a middle linebacker ends with in the season for, I mean, to be considered a good defensive tackle with no sacks. Uh, if you're a defensive tackle, you need to have sacks, and that's the key part. I think, I mean, he's just not getting it done in the middle. He's doing all right tackle-wise, but just nothing there but i mean even sacks, even if you're yeah. not getting sacks as a defensive tackle you can be a run stopper but you haven't seen that from him there hasn't been a yeah, part of need to have much more out. tackles let's get on to number one this one i think is very obvious jerry judy uh i mean man there's you can't write this stuff the best receiver out of the class seemingly out of this absolutely absolutely stacked receiver class first of all he was the best receiver going on to a broncos team not only was he the best receiver he goes into a situation where their number one receiver Cortland sutton gets injured and he does nothing. He has 19 receptions, a touchdown, one touchdown, uh, uh, just shy of 300 yards with 286. That's terrible. That's bad. And Tim Patrick now, I would say, is the number one, I guess. Um, I would say there's, I mean, it's between, but there's, I know Drew Locke was out, but it, he's just, like, I don't understand. Like, I don't know. There's not analytics I can say. It's just... He is put in the best situation, doesn't perform, and at the end of the day, you're not a good player if you can't do that. You're not a NFL world, you know, world class player. He's just not there right now. I think Jerry Judy needs to step up, and I, the footwork he has, the speed he has, he has everything to be a great receiver. Just hasn't produced, and seemingly every single receiver that was drafted after him in the first and early second round has been better. I think, I mean, as you said, Judy, he was put into a really, really good situation with Cortland Sutton getting hurt. Not that I wanted Cortland Sutton to get hurt, but this was possibly one of the best things that could have happened to him. And uh, he really just hasn't done anything with it. 19 catches as the number one receiver, and as the number one receiver out of the draft. He's got such good footwork. His route running is ridiculous. Plus, he has such great hands. He's fast. He's got just about all the assets he needs to be great. But, I mean, he's had a lack of targets. He's only had 28 targets, or, no, I think a little bit more than 28 targets, which is not great, but um, only 19 catches. He's taken them for not quite 300 yards and just one touchdown. It's just not enough. He's just had a poor start to the season. He needs to really pick it up in the second half if he wants to stay with the Broncos as their number one receiver when Cortland Sutton comes back. If they want to be a dynamic duo, he's got to step it up. Make sure if you did enjoy to like and subscribe, it means a lot. Uh, you know, all subscriptions mean a lot. And as well, comment down below. We say it every video, and I say this every video, but make sure to comment. We will uh, respond to your comment. So anything, if you want to say hi, you want to talk about rookies, you want to have a, an argument about who you think, make sure to comment down below. As well, follow all of our socials. They'll be on the screen somewhere here. Make sure to follow us if you want to DM us privately. We can talk. We try and get to your DM. Uh, and yeah. Make sure to go do that. Drop us a follow. We're almost at a thousand over there. We post clips of our videos, you know, interactive posts, like game day stuff, stats, all that stuff. So make sure to go follow us over there. Classic, you know, sports Instagram thing. But we will see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching.